Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. On the update last week, I talked about the possibility of short lasting bursts of heat. Well, it looks like one of those is on the way in the coming days. So without further ado, I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation today uses data from the GFS global model. It runs from 18 GMT, Monday the 13th. At the outset, it's dry across much of the UK, with high pressure from the Azores beginning to build northeastwards, more unsettled still in the northwest. And really, that general theme continues through the next few days. Outbreaks of rain at times in Northern Ireland, Western Scotland in particular, but dry in southern and central regions. By Thursday and Friday, very warm air is beginning to push up from southern Europe. I'll take a look at the air mass uh, temperature profile in a moment. But even, even on Friday, this is showing the uh, possibility of heavy rain in the far northwest. In the weekend, and uncertainty grows, low pressure to the south starts having more of an influence. There could be some heavy and thundery downpours. I'll look at that as well in a moment. But also, cooler air is pushing down from the northwest. A lot of uncertainty about the timing of this transition and the risk of rain. By Sunday, though, the outbreaks of rain, the storms are pushing away, and into the early part of next week, it's looking dry once more in southern and central regions, especially. It could be quite warm, although not hot more mixed in the northwest. The air mass temperature profile, uh, which accompanies that GFS run. To begin with, greens over most of the UK, warmer air in the south. I'll run this quickly. By Friday, what we see is very warm air pushing up from southern Europe, especially across uh, southern and central parts of Britain doesn't really make it into the north, and um, particularly not the northwest. Then through the weekend, that very warm air is pushed away. It's more mixed by the end, although by Tuesday the 21st, air mass temperatures are starting to rise once more. Pleasantly warm, quite possibly at that point. So what sort of temperatures can we expect at the ground level through the coming days? Well, to begin with, on Tuesday the 14th of June, values of 21, 22 in the south, 16, 17 in the north, just very close to the average. But if we look down to Spain, the GFS, GFS is showing 41 Celsius, and that's where our air is going to be coming from later in the week. Even by their standards, that is very, very hot indeed. So moving forwards to Thursday the 16th, GFS now showing 28 Celsius in the London area, 19 there in eastern Scotland. And with that tendency, which it has to undershoot by a degree or two, it's just possible that 30C could be reached. Then on Friday, it's going for 30 Celsius in the London area. So again, that would suggest a maximum of 31 or 32 is very possible. It remains significantly cooler, though, in the northwest of the UK. I think it's just worth taking a look at some of the other computer model temperature projections as well. These two charts are both from the UK Met Office, for one on the left, the global model, for one on the right, the regional. Maximums there, 30 Celsius on the global and 32 Celsius on the higher resolution chart on the right. Here's the Canadian and ICON projections, very, very similar, 30 Celsius, 31, 32 perhaps. Therefore, there's pretty good agreement between those computer models for maximum temperatures on Friday to be between 30 and 33 Celsius. Hot! But what happens in the days which follow? GFS maximum temperatures on Saturday. Well, these are interesting to say the least because in the southeast, 29's been shown, so it's still very warm or even hot. But look at North Wales, maximums there of 8 Celsius. That's a 
big contrast over a short distance. It's because the GFS is forecasting rain and downpours in this area as the cooler air starts to return southwards. Going forwards to Sunday the 19th, it's cooler everywhere now in the southeastern corner, back down to 20, 21 Celsius. Then Monday the 20th and values are rising once again, pleasantly warm 24 Celsius there in the south, 21 in the northeast. So does the MoGreps Ensemble cast any more light on the Saturday temperatures? These, these are averages rather than maximums. And for London, so the trend clearly upwards through the coming days, maybe reaching a peak on Friday the 17th there, close to 30 Celsius. The, the maximums, of course, will be a little bit higher than the average through that time slot. So these are generally consistent with what the other models are showing. But then through Saturday, there's a big spread there. There are some very warm or hot runs still in, in the mix, but a number are much cooler. It's just highlighting that uncertainty about the transition which will be taking place through the weekend. By the early part of next week, maximums are down to, to the low, uh, mean temperatures, sorry, are down to the low to mid 20s Celsius. Taking a look at the same chart for Belfast, quite interesting because here the signal is for Friday to be the warmest. It's a strong signal, although there is a big spread there as well. But by Saturday the 18th, definitely cooler based on this data. Thunderstorms. These three charts are for 15 GMT, Saturday the 18th of June. They're generated from recent runs of the GFS model and they show forecast, cape and lifted index values. Those are measures of instability in the atmosphere and they give a good indication of the likelihood of thunderstorms. Generally on these particular plots, the yellows, oranges and reds highlight areas where there is an increasing risk of storms. So it really looks as though Based on this data, there's a moderate risk on Saturday afternoon across southern and central regions. It's not particularly high at the moment, it's got to be said, because really you'd be looking for darker oranges and reds to be appearing. But as I mentioned, computer models tend not to be very good at picking up this type of development, so the risk may increase as we head through the week. Just taking a look at the MoGreps rainfall chart for London as well, it doesn't look overly wet. You can see the 18th and 19th when there's that possible storm risk. There aren't really any big spikes showing up at the moment. Again, it's something to keep an eye on in uh, subsequent runs of this model. Perhaps there will be some bigger spikes starting to show up as the time approaches. Taking a look at the deterministic rainfall charts for the coming 10 days, these are for days 0 to 5, ECM on the left, GFS on the right, so they go through to 00 GMT Saturday the 18th. Basically completely dry over much of the UK apart from the northwest. Looking at the charts for days 0 to 10, so these are covering the period when there could be thunderstorms around. Values even in southern and central regions now don't look particularly high by any means. ECM going for maximums of about 20 millimetres and GFS on the right, maximums of around 27 millimetres in North Wales. So once more, neither of these models are really picking up at this point on the possibility of thundery downpours. But as I say, that could well change as the time approaches. So, what do the deterministic models look like when compared against each other at one week ahead? The GFS, which the animation was based on, has high pressure centered to west of the UK, a ridge probably building towards us. The Canadian, similar story, low pressure maybe having more influence, increasing the risk of showers in the northeast. The Icon, similar again, 
high pressure building in from the Atlantic. Uh, the ECM, once again, high pressure having a good deal of influence. And finally, the UK Met Office Global, perhaps the best of them all if it's settled weather that you're hoping for at that point. Reasonably good agreement as ever. The details vary. The suggestion though is that high pressure will be centered in the Atlantic and extending eastwards again towards the UK. Not hot, but pleasant conditions probably. Cloud amounts could be something to keep an eye on as well though with the uh, position of that high pressure to, to our west. Well, that covers week one, lots of interesting weather, but what are the trends and probabilities as we head through week two? I'll start with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air mass temperatures across the top through the second week, generally close to the average, perhaps a little above it. Just worth, while I'm here, looking at that hot spell earlier on as well. Here it is, it shows up very clearly the very, very steep drop in air mass temperatures as well through this 17th, 18th, 19th. It's just that uncertainty about the timing. timing. This also has a few big spikes around there which are pointing towards a possibility of downpours, a stronger signal on this ensemble chart from the was on the Mograps one, for example. But going forwards through week two, which is what I'm focusing on, there are a few rain spikes, but the number of them decreases later on. So perhaps a changeable start, then drier later. And I'll come back to the two meter temperatures at the moment, but it's just worth noting that the GFS there has the, so the operational run in the ensemble is staying significantly above the average, at least at the 850 HPA level. So about 1500 meters above our heads. Going up to Belfast, MS temperatures, the 850 HPA once again, close to the average on the whole. That's shown by the thick purple line, the ensemble mean, the thick black line, the 30 year norm. There's an ongoing risk of rain. It looks wetter than the London plot throughout this period. Two meter temperatures, the data table for London, mainly oranges, the light and darker ones, so 16 to 20 and 21 to 25 Celsius. If anything, there is a warming trend. So it turns cooler early on in the second week, but then there's an upwards tick there with the darker orange becoming more dominant. So the 21 to 25s, also some red returning and a little bit of pink at the very end. One or two runs going for 30 Celsius or over again towards the end of the month. Up to Belfast, it's cooler. The yellows and light oranges, so 11s to 15s and 16s to 20 being in the ascendancy, although later on there's a bit of darker orange there, the 21s to 25s, a slight warming trend. And as ever with these GFS, GEFS values, they do tend to undershoot, as I keep saying, by a degree or two. The mean surface level pressure uh, chart for York so all of the runs here in the ensemble being plotted suggests that there's, there's some uncertainty here about the influence of low pressure early on. A number of runs are dropping pressure significantly, but on balance, it's fairly close to the norm. And then later on, it's trending upwards a little bit once more. Perhaps that ties in quite nicely with the decreasing number of rain spikes which appeared on the London 16 day plot. The GEFS mean pressure plot for 10 days ahead, so this is just for one time slot, Thursday the 23rd, suggests high pressure centered to the west, uh, something of a northwesterly tilt on things, so not particularly warm if this is correct. Probably fairly close to the average at that point based on this one chart. Looking at the ECM plot for the same time, it's a similar story. High pressure there centered to the west, the southwest, and low pressure to the northeast. So, to summarize, week one, there's a risk of rain at times in the northwest of the UK, but it should be dry elsewhere, at least through the first few days. 
Temperatures will be rising. They start off very close to the average, but by Friday, 30 Celsius or even a little bit higher is probable in the southern half of Britain. The top being shown by models at the moment is around 33 Celsius. So between 30 and 33 is strongly favoured. It then becomes more changeable. There's a risk of thunderstorms uh, through Saturday, maybe into Sunday, although it hasn't been very strongly signalled at the moment by the models. Nonetheless, it certainly looks like it will be turning cooler, although towards the end of the week it could become quite warm once again, especially in the south. Week two, it's mixed. The risk of rain is greatest in the north. Temperatures probably slightly above the average overall, and there could still be some very warm days in the south. Just a chance once more of some very warm air being pulled up from southern Europe towards us. So, there we have it. it Definitely looks like we'll be having our first taste of hot weather through the first week. Probably taste being an apt description because it doesn't look like it's going to be hanging around for too long. Although even once it even even after it moves away, there are indications that high pressure centered to the west will be building back towards the UK and there should be quite a lot of dry and pleasantly warm weather around, especially in southern and central regions. More mixed in the north. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.